Scatchel. Ominous. Don't call it a comeback. To we have no cares. You join us here on a transfer deadline the night where I'm waiting for my agent to call with the news that I've been signed for Kilmarnock. How about yourself, Robert Borthwick? I signed a two-year deal uh, about 20 minutes ago. After oh. yeah, just just after fuck it, phoning Gary Lock for a chat, he offered me a three-year deal. I don't know why. Um, Congratulations. I no, actually, I have no intention of being a professional footballer. He just he just thought he'd offer me a three-year deal because that's how he fucking does business. Did you just mention that you'd been at Tynecastle during 2013 and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everything just grew from there? I, I was a season ticket holder during the relegation season and I stayed to the end of the 7-0 loss against Celtic. So he thought, do you know what, this is the kind of guy that I want. So, do you know what, this guy contributed just as much as Dale Carrick did. <laughs> exactly, yes. So I'm now, yeah, now, I'm now a Kilmarnock player. So, oh. thanks man, thanks very much. I bet your mum's proud. Mm, doubt it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, well, 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 all that insanity is going on. Uh, yeah, Hart and Midlothian have signed zero people. Not today. Not today. No. 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 Uh, having done our business early and spectacularly well. It's very handsomely. Yes. Yeah. Though there are rumblings that we're, we're in for a couple of free agents. Yeah, I, I think... Um, it was mentioned on Twitter earlier on that Robbie and Levine are going to be watching the, the, the free agent market as it, um, as it swells over the next few days um, to see if we can get anyone else. And I think, you know, I think we need to get another couple of folk in now that we've let go of McCarty. Oliver is up in there. I mean, by the end of this podcast, who knows, he might have signed for someone. Um, so, yeah. Probably Kilmarnock. Probably Kilmarnock. Probably in a three-year deal. Yeah. Yes. Um, it, the the rhetoric coming from the club seems to be that we, we don't have anyone specific in mind. We just know that there's there's people out there and there there could be a, an Adam Eckersley esque signing to be made. Or a Miguel Payado, yeah. If you prefer, which I do. I would much prefer that. <laughs> um, not least because we have about half a midfielder left. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, it would seem strange to let go of McCatty, especially without having a fair amount of confidence that there's a left back out there to be got. Do we even have like a youth left back, or do we just play with ten? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we try and play uh, Smith on both flanks at the same time. <laughs> yeah, just just play on both sides, see what happens. Because um, I we, we had that young fullback on trial from Queens Park, but I don't think anything happened with that. So. I think, to be honest, mostly it tends to be Liam Henderson continuing his tour of every position on the football park. Right, OK. I wonder if he's good at any of them yet. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he scored for Stenhouse Muir the other day. Good for him. Yeah, probably playing at fucking centre-forward. <laughs> but yeah, so in the meantime, uh, you're not allowed to get injured, do you want? Yeah, I don't think he looks like the kind of guy that would get injured, considering I think he's made out of steel and granite. And tungsten core. Yes, <laughs> Yes. Yeah, should it be fine. Good man. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that's that's really it, apart from Kilmarnock. It's quite an uneventful deadline day, but aren't they all in Scotland? Yeah, also... Oh, uh, unless you're Hibs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's, uh, they just signed every striker available. But um, crucially, they're making sure they keep up their solid ratio of insufferable arseholes to decent striker uh, ratio. Yeah, with, uh, Islam Farouz. Islam Farouz, Farouz, of course. I thought you were meaning Henry Annier. I was like, I thought he seemed like a nice enough guy on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise the time to Henry Awful Annier. footballer, but... Um, ah, that's harsh. He scored goals from Motherwell. He can do a job at this level. At Hibs level. <laughs> Wait a minute, am I thinking of the right guy? No, you're, you're no, I'm thinking of, of the Estonian guy. I'm thinking of uh, Ojama. Yes, that's who I'm thinking of. No. Who's Henry Anya? He did play for Motherwell at one point. Didn't score many goals. Didn't score many goals for Dundee United. Signed on a season-long loan. Ah. To join their other, like, 14 strikers. So, yeah. Well, I'm sure it's the competition for places that'll keep Jason Cummings on his toes. I don't think he's smart enough to realise that there's other <laughs> people there, to be honest with you. He's, yeah, in his own little... 
fucked up shit here, throwing muffins at McDonald's staff world. Great guy. Yep. Henry, can you? Nope. No idea who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even picture him, can you? He's, no, just, no. he's literally not got a face. Um, but yeah, so Harps might sign some folk, and I, I hope we do. Me too. Midfielder of the attacking variety would be lovely. Yes, please. Preferably Spanish and with a hair band, but that's... No, uh, just is, that, is that just like a, a little thing that you want? Just being picky, yeah. I'd, I'd quite like a towering Swede. A towering Swede. <laughs> if we're just getting that all out there, fair enough. I'd also yeah. quite like a German. Oh, uh, yeah. I yeah. like Germans. Not many Germans have played for Hearts. Dennis Prichinenko is the only one. Well, uh, while we're on the subject, I'd love for a Japanese player to play for Hearts, but it's basically impossible. Yeah, no, I don't think that's going to happen, man. <laughs> unless, unless we pull Koki Mizuno out of nowhere, <laughs> lure him back to Scotland. Um, yeah, Yeah, his career didn't go very far, I can tell you that. No. Um, currently toiling away in uh, the, the second tier of Japanese football, which... Sure. Um, not a great level, let me tell you. <laughs> Who knows, Ryan Christie might end up there in a couple of years as well. It's, uh, yeah. The Celtic effect. Look at us talking about other, other teams. T- teams in Scotland. I don't like it. Well, then let's get back to business. I, I, me, Nicol Hay, was at uh, New Douglas Park for the first time in my career. I was at a good friend's wedding, so, you know, I'll try and rub it in that you're some sort of super, like, proper hearts man. What's implying I'm some sort of arm- I am sitting in an armchair, but like implying I'm some sort of armchair supporter. How dare you? What, what's it What's it like to have friends? Is it good? Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you. <laughs> Great. Uh, yep. Well, I was at New Douglas Park, which uh, I actually quite enjoyed as far as these sort of tin pot central belt venues go. I, th- I thought it was all right. I quite liked the um, weird elevation of the crowd above the pitch because it meant you could see. Well, Which yeah, you don't I always mean, get at, you, uh, at grounds. You've got a clear line of sight right into the Morrison's car park that's next door. <laughs> I mean, you can you can see over the wall at the other side of the stadium. Um, and, and, you know, crucially, the pitch. Ah, yeah, no, you can see that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's it's not a nice surrounding or stadium. I thought I just got off the train station, walked along a, a path, and I, I was there. It was, it was like just being... Herded into the, into the stadium. There was uh... some support though. Some crowd went along. Yeah, some, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they were not. We sold out behind the goals and the the marquee thing. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. The the the, the <laughs> weird little beer tent. The, the gazebo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Falkirk used to have one of them as well. I sat in it once. True. Very strange. Yeah, it looked it looked very restrictive view. Aye. Lots of pillars at the front of it. It's like it's like watching a football game from a fucking garden party. <laughs> <laughs> You're expecting some croquet to sort of start start getting played at some point. But all the all the hooligans tanked up on pins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely off their tips on gin and tonic. But um, yeah. Well, it was a it was a thrilling game. Uh, there are some obvious headlines I'm sure you're aware of, dear listener. But we'll we'll get to them when we get to them. Yeah. Uh, the, the the general sort of overview of the game. Is... Now, nah, Willie Collum. Oh, oh yeah, right. Okay. Well, if we're going to look at that, then. No, no, I just no, I couldn't help it. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't dance around it. I had to scream it, and now you can go back to your little thing. Okay, cool. Uh... Go back to your presenting. <laughs> Hearts played reasonably well. Um, people were. A little, uh, well, the, the crowd around me were, were, were frustrated in the first half, partly the Willie Collum effect. Uh, partly, we, we didn't craft a lot in the first half, uh, but Hamilton were playing well. Um, and we, we had to rely on them fluffing a couple of very presentable chances. But, you know, generally we were defending all right and we were creating all right. It was just all right. It wasn't drastically wrong. Yeah. Um, and... To be honest, like you know, over the piece of the game, we could easily have won it if Callum Patterson hadn't been sent off. Yeah. Um, which again, we'll we'll deal with when when we get to it. Um, so it was it was a four two three one with Osman So on the right, Walker in the hole. Uh, no wait, no So was on the left. King was on the right. Uh, and Kwanma being all delectable up front. Good for him. Uh, continued with Gomez and Boabin in central midfield because there are only fit central midfielders. So that was... Uh, oh, well, well our, our only fit central midfielders who can legally buy a pint. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Fuck. That is true. <laughs> Sean McCurdy is like 12. Um, 
The Prince Lavin actually played one of those like like sort of body casts. <laughs> was <laughs> it was it wheeled about the pitch by Margaro Gomez? <laughs> he he might as well have been to be honest. He was he was a he was a yard short. It, it did kind of show at times. He he did again following on from the, the game against uh, Partick. He hung back more and Morgaro was more sent forwards. But um we it was quite obvious that we were bypassing central midfield quite a lot, playing up the wings. Um, Playing a variety of balls to uh, Juan Manso to sort of hold up and, and push down for uh, the likes of Walker and King to run on to. Um, again, could it have made a difference in the in the overall shape of the game? Probably. I mean, yes, it's definitely better if all your players are actually fit. But um, yeah, uh, well, we'll get to it when it, when it comes to the last goal, but like Prince by the end of the game was taking some very heavy touches and looking just sort of generally off the pace. but. Yeah. We really didn't have any other option but to, to keep playing them. So, a shame, but like I say, could have been won with 11 men. Yeah. So, um, Hamilton, I have to say, are a very good side. Yeah, they, yeah. they, you know, they, they were tipped for relegation because Mark Canning is about as good a manager as he is a footballer, <laughs> was the assumption that a lot of people made after he took over from Alex Neal. But they, they seem to have really turned it around. I mean, they've got... Ali Crawford looks fucking superb. Um, he enjoyed getting it right up us because we released him when he was 15, apparently. Which is great because I, I didn't know his name before Saturday. Yeah, good for you, man. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, it, you know... It, was, it, it literally wasn't my decision, but, you know, yeah, like whatever it, makes you happy. It, it was quite literally someone who was sitting in the stand. If you just turned left, instead of celebrating at the Hearts fans who still don't really know who you are um, and aimed at the person who'd released you that would have made more sense but he does seem to be a very good footballer um, don't think he'll be there for very long um, if he keeps improving then he's got to be a fucking shoe in the centre of Norwich <laughs> yeah absolutely that's, that's a definite but they've got guys like Courtage coming in as well they, they do look good and Martin Canning does seem to have made them play some good football as well well yeah some good However, football they were my favourite part of the highlights and I mean we scored couple of pretty good goals. Mm -hmm. My favourite part of the highlights was when it might have been Crawford, it might have been Darry and McKinnon, I'm not sure. One of the chances you mentioned was Swift when he was through on goal and he literally yes. kicked the turf and fell like face first onto the ball. It's one of the best comical moments I've ever seen in a game of football. I'm pretty sure that was Crawford but I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure but yes that was spectacular. He was clean through and yeah. just like his <laughs> legs stopped working. It was quite incredible to behold. I, I don't uh, blame the surface I don't care it was gold absolute comedy gold yeah so um, the uh, uh, well we were talking about um, Hamilton being generally quite having quite good football I mean there's elements of that but their their main game plan is based on being solid breaking incredibly well with sort of speed and knowledge of where people are running to Doogie Emery was quite impressive I thought in terms of his sort of pace and uh, movement and, and, and those sort of breaks uh, but they also played a really sort of nasty, niggly, professional game as well. Lots of little uh, tugs to like tugs of uh, of shirts and things like that to break up hearts, uh, hearts breakaways. That's what um, we've been doing well this season, though. Has been yeah kind of arty against other teams. To be honest with you, that's that's what we've been affected at. So yeah, the, a lot of played us at our own game. A lot of professional fouls and a lot of uh, extremely unprofessional bundlings in, yeah. which I think is part of what really fueled the rage of the crowd towards Willie Collum. Nah, because to be honest it, with you, I think that rage was probably already there. They it, needed any excuse. It any would, excuse. Any excuse. And the excuse that was provided was um, three times in the first half, twice on Billy King, once on uh, Walker. Uh, Hamilton players just wiped them out just unceremoniously went straight through them challenges that they're not definite straight straight reds but you know they're in the conversation yeah and you know each time Colin decided on on a yellow card um, so that that led to frustration when a, a similarly sort of borderline challenge went in from Hearts it was rewarded with a red card yeah uh, but you know the the only thing that Willie Collin got got glaringly wrong, like a hundred percent, that is her own decision. In the uh, first half, was uh, Juanma was on the attack down the left channel, uh, and got like just sort of clipped just outside the box in a Kujabi territory, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was signalled as a goal kick, uh, when, when it should have been a free kick. But 
Yeah, yeah. Other than that, football in a lot of circumstances is a matter of opinion rather than a matter of fact. And uh, Colin, for the first half anyway, was was erring on the side of yellow cards and keep the game going. Yeah. But so um, the the first half, not lots going on. Like I say, um, mostly playing down the wings. Billy King, some some great little cameos when they we managed to get him on the ball he was sort of quite incisive with with running and uh, cutting across the the back four which was pretty good and oh yeah um well actually something that Colin did which was quite generous is that uh Hamilton might have had a penalty I don't know if you've seen that now. yeah Igor Rossi yes um sort of seemed to just run across the back of the guy and the guy fell over it was a very um very dozy for me, Gordon, I have to say. Like the Hamilton were on a break that we successfully repelled, but then they, they got possession back in the midfield and played it forward again and like the man like the, the Hamilton forward was just basically lurking behind Rossi and cutting behind him and like Rossi sort of like half heartedly thought, Well is he offside? Realised no he's absolutely not yeah. and just clumsily got back there. If you look at the slow motion replays though, the guy actually falls over um, Igor's smile. Yeah, is, it's difficult. I mean, it's a big, hard thing to avoid. It's it's a yeah. big yeah, a big physical smile, um, and it, it got in the way of the guy. It, you know, just a coming together of smile and uh, legs. To be honest with you, so yeah. Um, something else to to point out from Hamilton from the first half. Uh, they they didn't look very confident in uh, in possession in the back, especially their big number forty four, whose name is uh, Delima Delima Italia Pietra. Which is that, incredible. That's a great name. That's that's yeah. almost like a, a heart signing name. It's that good. Yeah, I'm not sure what his first name is or what he actually gets called. Wait, was that is that just his second name? Um yeah, it looks like it. His surname is Delima Talia Pietra. That's fucking great. I don't even know how many syllables that is, I don't care to find out, it just knows loads. Uh but yeah, he was I mean, a big unit and like like a good sort of agricultural defender, but like when he was trying to play it out from the back, he looked very, very nervous. But for whatever reason, we didn't press too high. Um, I think probably the reason for that is that we were very, very worried about getting caught on the break. Because any time we did try and close them down, if they got the out pass, then the likes of Emery Crawford like that were, were in behind us quite quickly. So I think Robbie was quite rightly a bit cautious about pressing too high. Fair enough. Um, any chances? So yeah, um, not a lot of chances for, for either team apart from uh, the... Um, <laughs> the terrible, terrible attempt by uh, Ali Crawford. Oh, and um, Emery also uh, ballooned a chance well over the bar after they had a, another good break from a, a Hearts corner. Uh, but the goal came. Ooh, the goal came. Uh, Ali Mushturk not covering himself in glory. Ali Mushturk um, not remembering how to function as a human being. Um, he doesn't jump. He doesn't lean his head towards the ball. He just sort of collapses bizarrely backwards um, I, I have no idea what he's doing I have no idea what he's doing he seems to forget how to make his body be higher in the air <laughs> uh, yeah that that would be a very accurate explanation because there's no other way to actually describe it, it it's it's a bad bit of defending it's as simple as that not very Oshturk like very, uh, very un -Oshturk. Uh, which took um, Alexander by surprise. He was scrambling off his line as Kurtai um, bundled in in front of him. Oh, by the way, it was Kurtai who uh, absolutely ruined the chance. Was when it? He, yeah, when he uh, completely fell over and. Brilliant. Yeah, kicked the turf. Yeah, ah, that's him. Great stuff. Uh, the number 12, as I put in my notes, because uh, I was making notes and realised I, like, I don't know who any of these players are. <laughs> absolutely no idea. <laughs> absolutely no idea. <laughs> Oh, I remember Doogie Emery murdering somebody. That's that's all I remember. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, I haven't wanted just a bunch of regens. I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like it was weird because that was at the the far goal from where we were we were sitting. Yeah. So like the build up to the goal looked like Aline trying to head a ball by sort of leaning backwards slightly and missing it completely, and then um, Alexander running onto it and all of his limbs going in every direction at once. So I thought it might have been an own goal as Alexander just sort of like went. <laughs> <laughs> it behind him, but uh, no. On closer inspection, it was uh, Kurtai's finish. Yeah. And uh, that put Hamilton ahead at the break. 
Um, then, second half. Um, slight change in the second half. Uh, so was put into the number 10 and Walker out to the left. Walker had been good when he was on the ball, but he w wasn't really running a lot to try and get on it. He wasn't really looking to make things happen. So just, was... just getting back from injury himself. Oh, uh, is he? Yes. Oh, well, of course, because he wasn't playing last week. I didn't... I didn't realise he was injured, I thought he was just rested. No, no, he did injured himself and he'd, I think he'd had a couple of injections to, to actually um, play in the match at all. Nicholson, that's why he was on the bench, because he's injured as well. So. Right, right, okay. Well, that, that explains some things. I mean, it explains why he... Um... I should just start with Car Calumet Morrison, just because of his name, really. Why not? Well, that, that confused them. They, yeah. they should put his full name on the back of his shirt, so as they, like defenders are facing up to him, like, well, if he's, they go past, they go, his name's... What? Calumet. Did I read that right? Hold on. Have I got dyslexia? Shit. Am I having a stroke? And then goal. Boom. Yeah. Juanma. Yeah. 1-0. Yes. That's how it works. <laughs> ah, Callum in. But um, not far into the second half, our own slick manufacturer of goals manufactured another goal. Fucking hell, Billy King. You are amazing. Yeah. I've, I've got a lot of time for the boy, I must say. Um, it's quite neat. Neat enough build up as well, is it not? It sort of worked its way out to the left and then so passed it into the middle for Billy. No, um, um, it was Juanma who found himself out in the left. Pretty sure it's so. Oh, no, sorry. Juanma sets, yeah, yeah, no, sets up Patterson. Juanma sets up Patterson. I was yes. at a fucking wedding and I know this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. In fact, actually, the, the way it was set up, it was, uh, it was a long ball out of defence from Igor if I actually read my notes instead of trying to use my memory, which is faulty <laughs> and terrible. Uh, yeah, Igor put the ball up the left channel, uh, so drifted into that, um, played it to King, who, uh, who uh, just cut Jinked. right across their defence and roofed it from the acutest angle in at the near post. But my my, my favourite part of the finish is it's his right foot. It's his right foot that he finishes it with, even though he's on his left foot. He, he generally just lifts it as high as he possibly can from about three yards out. But that's almost like probably the right thing to do there because like he, he the right like the wrong foot coming across the ball would mean he could get under it a bit more to, to sort of roof it in that way. He's a clever boy. He's really thought about like God, where's the most amount of space in this incredibly unlikely situation and thought about it within three picoseconds? He's a, he's awfully good. He is. But like, this, well, well, this is this is the thing about Billy King. Like when when Walker's on song, he's probably not as good as Walker. He's probably not as good as Nicholson when they're having like their extra special. Oh my God, they've scored from thirty yards against Hibbs moments. Yeah. yeah. But he's so regularly and reliably providing like two or three moments per game that that, that just make goals. Is is one of the most effective. Footballers, I can remember Hearts having in mm -hmm. ages. I mean, obviously, yeah, the argument is he did that at a lower level last season, and that's yeah. absolutely right. That is completely correct. But um, I think I'm trying to throw my mind back here. This is this is like a dodgy memory, but it was definitely a thing. Um, STV Sport used to have power rankings at yeah. the tail end mm -hmm. of our relegation season that Tom Watt did. Yeah, and Billy King was like at the top of the power rankings for about six weeks at the end of that season because he'd come into the team, scored against Kelly, scored against Partick twice, scored against Partick at home, set up goals and just became ruthlessly effective. And to then, be clear, these power rankings weren't just subjective things; they were like sort of mathematically based on yeah. like uh, contribution to the game and numbers. Yeah, various different yeah. numbers and you know mathematical equations and shit. And yeah, he was like sort of quite near the top of that consistently and then he's coming this season again and he's starting to score and provide goals again and it's, you know, mm. It's just magical but he seems to do it in such a way that, well like lots of Hearts fans don't notice but like especially people from other teams don't notice just how much he's contributing. Like we're, we're involved in like a, like an SPL uh, fantasy football league I think I might be the only person in Scotland that has Billy King in my team and he's just sitting there like piling on points. <laughs> yeah. So like I hope he continues to be invisible in this incredibly productive mode for the rest of his career. Also just being invisible to scouts. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Um, you know, the opposition players, scouts, everyone apart from himself and the team. That would be great. Yeah. As long as his brother could like just not mention him around the Swansea. Oh, he's at crew now like, anyway, man. He's at crew. Is he? Yeah, on loan. Oh, ah, okay. Scored a couple of times. Good for him. Yeah, fucking right. Well done, Adam. Well done, Adam. Absolutely. 
keep this up and you'll get your big move to Kilmarnock before too long. <laughs> now, you mentioned earlier your favourite part of the game. Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you that the best moment of the match did not make the highlights and I don't understand why. It's also, it's also one of my favourite parts of the game because it just illustrated like... Sometimes I don't know what Hearts fans want out of life or following a football team. <laughs> right. This moment sent everyone around me in apoplexy and I was, just, I was just warmed by it. We were being pressured in defence. Igor was on the ball and he thought the best way to, to relieve the pressure was to play a Rabona pass <laughs> to Aline who was five yards to his right so Aline could knock it out. <laughs> Oh God, it was wonderful. A Rabona, for those who don't know the technical term, that's when you like kick your leg around your standing leg. Yeah, and hit the ball with it. Yeah. yeah. And he did that under pressure at the back, just because, fuck it, why not? Under pressure, like, uh, sort of, like, maybe sort of six yards to the left of the penalty box, maybe about 20 yards out from goal. Under pressure, like about three Hamilton players sort of, like, converging in, he played that to a lead. <laughs> I reckon I reckon what's happened there is he's he's seen sort of a bunch of Hamilton players bearing down on him. Maybe the likes of Morris, the big striker, mm. Kurtai, Crawford, guys like this, you know, guys with a bit of pace, a bit of physicality. And he's seen them and he's thought, fucking hell, I don't I don't know. Oh wait, wait a second, I'm eighty percent Brazilian. <laughs> I'm eighty percent Brazil at least eighty percent. I might even be like ninety percent Brazilian. I'm just gonna fucking do this. And yeah, I reckon that's that was the, the thought process in his head. Yeah, I mean, and, like the other ten percent is Italian defensive steel, but you know that that eight percent Brazilian flair came out in them there. Meanwhile, all the the dyed in the wool sixty year old <laughs> heart supporter men and boys guys around me was like, "That's not the place to do that." So, <laughs> oh no, that was terrible. You got away with that. I'm like, keep doing that. <laughs> That's why we go to football. Do it keep all the time. Me insane things that make me happy. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I prefer if we win, but do that, and I'm yeah. perfectly content. <laughs> Well done, Igor. Rossi yeah. Branco. Keep doing that. What a boy. Oh, um, uh, something that became a real uh, theme by this point in the game. Juanma was getting caught offside about every third attack that we had. Really? Yeah, and, and, like, not even marginally, just sort of, like... Lazy? You're, you're really... Not lazy, just completely mistiming the runs. Now, it might be a mistime of the pass that's being delivered, because, like... You know, like certain aspects of football are kind of set plays, even though they happen in open play. Yeah. Like you know, like a ball is received at a certain point, so the striker knows I should start my run in this direction now. So difficult to know what part of the machine exactly was misfiring, but it often ended with Huama looking incredulous at being flagged offside <laughs> when he was really about two or three yards offside. Right. Okay. Got you. So uh, well, that's, that's a shame. Maybe it was just uh, from from all, I. I I wasn't there, obviously, but from a lot of reports, it just looked like on a lot of parts of the pitch, it was a bit of a bad day at the office. I mean, regardless. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, pretty much every report I've seen, and from numerous Harris fans, they've all said that over the 90 minutes, Hamilton deserved to win. And that, to me, says that, you know, Hamilton, all due respect, they are a good team. They shouldn't be beating us. We should be beating teams like Hamilton. That, that should, know, that should be a thing. Hamilton, Hamilton did enough to win. It's like a 50-50 challenge. Like, if you just look at the game over the piece, you wouldn't be upset if Hamilton won it, but you wouldn't also have been upset if Hearts had won it. And Hearts could and should have won it with this second fucking brilliant goal yeah. of their double brilliant goal performance of the day. Yes. So, Kurt, talk us through it. You've seen this. I have seen this. Um, the ball is sort of played about, I think it's Walker... Um, is, is playing about with it and it ends up at Juanma who's drifted out to the left hand side um, he's maybe just about in line with the 18 yard box mm-hmm. on the left hand side drifts a ball into the back post where a rampage and Callum Patterson rampages his right foot right onto the fucking ball and uh, yeah it's beyond whoever their goalkeeper is within a split second he doesn't even move it's a wonderfully hit shot and it's a type of goal that Patterson has been threatening to score quite a lot recently. Um, Aleem's goal at um, Ross County yes. was a Callum Patterson right footed volley at the back post. Gavin Riley's goal against Forfar was a Callum Patterson right footed volley at the back post. 
And this was a Callum Patterson right foot volley at that post that actually went his way this time. That's the the sort of pattern that I really like. On almost perfect summation there, by the way, but it was it was Billy King that was ripping the pish out of the the Hamilton midfield and defence, like just sort of jinking about the box, playing it out to Huama, getting it back, jinking about, stretching them, waiting for the right moment. Yeah. And, and the the nicest part of the whole movement is when it comes back to Huama, he looks up and he can see Patterson beginning his run on the far side of the box yeah. and just delivers a peach of the ball right into the strike zone. Probably sees Patterson whilst he's still at our own corner flag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, goes in, breaks into a wee sprint at the back post. And he seemed to enjoy the goal a lot. I mean, some might say it was even like a kind of angry looking celebration. <laughs> uh, fuck it, I can tell you, I was fucking delighted to see it. It was just a thing of beauty. One of those things that you... When you see them like moving in front of you on the pitch, not knowing what's going to happen, you you're just beside yourself that the 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 world can fit together so beautifully. <laughs> Makes you feel that good things might happen. Yeah, and then a bad thing happens. A bad, really bad thing happened. Yeah. Now, my reaction at the time, sitting in the stands, almost directly in line behind it. Well, the the situation is, um, we're under pressure in defence. Uh, Patterson brings the ball down, sort of jinx around one player, he's looking to carry the ball out, he's doing okay, then he takes a really heavy touch, which takes it basically into, into Diggy Emery's in front of him, and Callum Patterson decides to destroy Emery's legs in order to get it back. McKinnon. Was it McKinnon? Darren McKinnon. Ah, uh, right, oh, oh no, it was, it was Emery that was uh, shouting at him afterwards, wasn't it? And but, McKinnon. Yes, well, yeah. With... with with what I felt, good reason. It's one of those challenges, as soon as I saw it, I just said to myself, nah, shit, he's off. Because it looked to me like a really dangerous, out-of-control lunge at the guy's legs. When in reality, it wasn't. Well, see, I don't know. I think that replay leaves... The replays that you get on TV are... They're difficult to interpret because we're from the side. There's people in the way. Now, I appreciate his, he's not gone in studs up. He's gone, like, knees up. No, he's gone in with the outside of his right foot, scooped the ball away, won the ball. His other foot isn't even in, isn't even in the equation, and Darren McKinnon's actually gone into his ankle with a straight leg. It was slowed down on sports scene. It's oh, nowhere right. near a red card. Okay, I haven't seen anything and slowed down. I mean, yeah, you you were in the stand, you know, looking down on it. Yeah. Willie Collin was two yards away. It's it's genuinely just a good challenge. You know, it's it's gone in. It's gone in at speed. They've both gone in at speed. I mean, I see. See, when I first saw the replay, mm -hmm. I kind of thought, ah, oh, yeah, no, he's, he's gone in a wee bit. The way the Hamilton boys fallen has made it look a lot worse. Um, but yeah, it's been slowed down. Michael Stewart did a great, great sort of monologue on why it's never a red card, and it really isn't. He's gone in with his side foot and swept the ball away. McKinnon, if anyone should have got sent off there, it should have been him because he's gone right in on top, studs into Callum Patterson's ankle. So you don't see in any way the argument that, it's not that Patterson's lunged in and it's is not out reckless. of control? It's not reckless, it's not out of control, it's a good tackle. He's done it at speed, but Callum Patterson's a fast guy. And then the Hamilton player's reaction is fucking ridiculous for a start. McKinnon jumps up, schemes in his face, so does Emery, when in actual fact, it was a fine tackle and they probably know it was as well. It's the way that the way that McKinnon's fallen has made it look pretty bad. As I say, full time, um, sorry, full speed replay. Yeah, I thought, fuck that, it's not a great tackle, but. So know. do you do you think that's incompetence for Colin, or do you think that's it's I mean, full speed real it's life Willie is difficult to tell. It's Willy Colin. So it's is what, is that what incompetence does. or? That's that's Willy Colin being Willy Colin and sending off a player. Doesn't matter if it's for the opposition, perhaps. He rarely goes through a game without sending a guy off. And he has seen an opportunity there. Probably exacerbated by the Hamilton player's reaction. You know, the way that the other guy's fallen. It does look like a bad one. But if you watch the sports scene highlights, it's never in a million years a red card. Ever. Well, okay, well, fuck him then. Yeah. Uh, I, everybody around me was raging maybe they, they're just better at reading tackles than I am but like I, I really thought at the time that it was a justified sending off uh, I haven't watched this sports scene uh, thing so I don't know but you seem very convinced and you're it, it slows it down and zooms in so you actually see the, the way the tackle goes in the way that Patterson sweeps his ball to the uh, sweeps his foot sorry to the right mm -hmm. his right foot to the right and takes the ball away and McKinnon goes in on 
Patterson's ankle. That's that's where the contact happens is when McKinnon stamps on Patterson. So he's not even hit McKinnon. McKinnon's hit him. Um, and then reacted daftly. So, yeah. Okay, well, we we reacted at that point. We were still 2-1 up. We reacted by replacing uh, Osman So with Jordan McGee, who went to right back and promptly had the worst 20 minutes of his entire Hearts career. He oh, was, really? He, he just was not at the races. Um, Christian Nadi shredded him repeatedly yeah. for for pace and awareness. Uh, but when the, the the equalizing goal for Hamilton came, it was actually, I mean, it's a it's a brilliant goal, but it is very slightly Prince's fault. Yeah, which well, is a slight shame because, like I say, he was gassed and not fit. But it's a really heavy touch, isn't it? It's um, it's a really heavy touch, which just falls sweetly to Crawford. Now it takes a great player to be able to just ping it in first time from that distance, but it was all kind of set up for him because uh, yeah. Prince just doesn't have the energy to control the ball better. Yeah. Which is a shame. Ah, bloody shame. Uh, and then the their winning goal is even more infuriating because it's another really poor defensive decision from Aline. It's not Blavin again. No, no, it's it straight to Garcia Tena. No, 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 no. This is before. This is before the um when the corner that it all came from was conceded. Ah, oh, right. Okay, so the the ball came in and um Aline. Well, I mean, it looks like he's trying to head the ball back to Alexander to pick up, but he heads it about eight yards wide of the goal. Right. And then, like, got really narky with Alexander asking him why he wasn't going and collecting it and Alexander's like because it's all the way over there and I'm old <laughs> I'm old damn it right. um, and then the corner comes in um, again Jordan completely loses his man at, at the front post he was nowhere near him so as they run out of the, the area that creates the space inside and again as you say Prince kind of uh, muffs the clearance yeah and then yeah, Garcia Tena hits a shot that Oshniwa does great to block, and then it just falls right back to his feet and he thunders at home. Yeah, and so uh, the comeback was complete for Hamilton, and Hearts lost a game which they very could well have won. So, annoying, annoying yeah. to lose the, the 100% record which we built up. Like I say, a lot of teams will find it very difficult to go to New Douglas Park, and... Uh, <laughs> We, did, we didn't actually expect we were going to go the whole season unbeaten, did we? Oh, I did. Yeah. Full of that expectation. Um, no. Is that because Kevin McCarty told you it would happen? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, no, I, I think, said at the start of the season, five wins out of six, I would have said, fuck yeah, I'll take that right now. Thanks very much. You know, we're already eight, eight or nine points ahead of seventh place. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, we've, we've built up a very good number of points. Um, Aberdeen... As, as Robin Nielsen said, Aberdeen and Celtic won't go the season unbeaten either. It's a matter of when Aberdeen's next game, their game in hand is against Hamilton at New Douglas Park. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, there's a long, long way to go. Um, I still think it's a pretty great record we've got to have, to have won five out of six. There's no shame in losing a game in the top fight, so we just need to dust ourselves down. We've got a couple of weeks until Cali Thistle. Yeah. Um, it's going to be another tough game, another tough away game. Then we've got Aberdeen, then we've got Celtic, so now it's going to come thick and fast. That's how we react to it. Rather than dwelling on it, that's how we react to it. But the nice thing about this game at Hamilton is, like I say, there was nothing in the performance that makes you deeply, deeply concerned. Anything that happened was explicable by injuries or a sending off. Yeah. Like the only part, the only player that played badly was McGee. And he was like thrust out in a position which is arguably not his position. Which oh god, I forgot about the worst thing he did actually. <laughs> uh, towards the end of the game, we're trying to build something, so he's like managed to get himself forward on the right. Uh, ball gets played up to him, he gets put under a bit of pressure, and he plays the ball back out for a goal kick from the halfway line. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, yeah, not a goal kick, like a hammer and corner. I mean. Oh. Like he played it back to our goal. Oh, right, okay, like oh, right. 50 yards. Shit, that takes some doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he, he really fucked up. So he's got a good right peg on him, we know that. <laughs> he, can, he can pick out the, um, the byline. The byline from <laughs> 50 yards. Yeah, it was, it was really. Yeah, it, it kind of put the, the cap on his performance. I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm picking on Jordan because it's the first time he's been that bad. Yeah. I mean, he, he had moments at. Easter Road 
Uh, but you know, like his general play has been decent. Uh, but you know, like, like, like I say, the rest of the team played fine. Like, could play better, but didn't play terribly. And the players that were below par were recovering from injuries. So, like you say, two weeks break for the international break. Hopefully, they will come back fit as fiddles. And they'll come back alongside Miguel Payado and Blasi Augustine as well. So, fingers crossed. Uh, I, I get the feeling that the. Miguel's got one of those injuries that might, you know, like two days before they're meant to come back. So it's been a bit of a recurrence. I think he's already back in full June. Well, that's delightful news. Isn't it? Isn't it just? That's delightful news. He's I bet that'll so be great. I keep forgetting how great. I keep forgetting he plays for us. And I'm like, oh, fuck, we've still got that guy. <laughs> oh, fuck, we've got one of the best midfielders in the league. Yeah. Yay! Yay. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah. So, the only way to, to cap off this performance is to sing a song for the best performing player. Yes. In the Harps team. Absolutely. Uh, no, there wasn't, well, there wasn't any one individual who was a shining beacon from minute one to minute 90. I think that Billy King uh, produced the most moments that uh, would have led to us winning the game if we'd won the game. Yeah, sure, <laughs> man. That's yeah. Let's run with that. But does, is that a sentence that makes sense? No, no <laughs> not one bit. It's a bunch of words, though. Um, and yeah, Billy King then. Like he was dead good. It right. was a great goal. I think he should get it for the goal. Yeah, goal. Well, the, the goal was, but I mean, Patterson's goal was spectacular. But in many ways, King's goal was better, just for the sheer amount of craft and technique that went into it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's give it to Billy. Breaking news: Gary Oliver is now a Queen of the South player. Fare thee well, Gulliver. Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Shit! I've been waiting for him to leave just to say that. Yeah. Um, he never did get a song, did he? No. And now he never will. Nope. Unless there's a Queen of the South podcast. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, which is all their fucking ideas. Those bastards. Do those, neighbours! <laughs> those terrible theoretical bastards. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Billy King songs. <clears throat> yeah, he was scraping the... Ah. Billy King has had so many songs because yeah. he keeps on being great. This is the last time. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, like, you care to send us a bank full of Billy King songs that we haven't yet used. Yeah. I'm not holding out much hope for that, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um... Yeah, this is like the fourth or fifth podcast. He's a podcast favourite. A favourite of the podcast. Uh, with good reason. Yeah, he's, he's great, isn't he? Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, so stop being so good, Billy. No, don't actually. Just keep being as keep, good. We're keep, just not going to give you any more fucking songs. Keep being good. It's, it's our problem, really, not yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, you're going first, right? Go first. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> right, okay. <clears throat> Um, see as you know what my song is, do you want to play me in? No. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna be a Billy King, so enemies beware. Well, I've never seen a king of wings with quite so shitty hair. I'm gonna be the main event, like no king was before. I'm staying up, not going down. I'll set them up for score. Well, thus far, it's a quite damn inspiring thing. <laughs> oh, you just can't beat Billy King. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, uh,. Parrot? Is he a parrot? The yeah. bird's intervention's kind of derailed it a little bit, but yeah, no, it's, 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 it's fine, yeah. 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 Better as a jewel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. follow that up. Okay. Defenders who face him fail, his brother went to Wales. He starts out on the bench, from Paul would say he's dead, <laughs> Billy. Scores and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, you win. Yes! <laughs> yes. It's just, just for the Wales bit. <laughs> yeah. That's not the, the, the first and last time that Emmanuel Fringpong got <laughs> name checked in a heart song. Was, a bit of dench, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah fantastic. Great. Well done, you. 
Yes, pulled that one out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, fuck. That's honestly, there's no more Billy King songs. There, there's like, none. There, there are no more songs that can fit the words Billy King in there. No, they don't <laughs> exist. None. No, there probably is some. We just don't know them because. Yeah, but there's only so much <laughs> knowledge we can fit in our heads. Exactly. And there you go. Uh, well, that's us for now. We'll be back in two weeks' time. A couple of weeks. Yeah. Because of international breaks and we're no longer in a league that plays during international breaks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is nice. Yeah, we actually get a wee rest. Yeah. That's lovely. Um, mm. But yeah, um, Inverness obviously is the Friday night game televised, mm-hmm. so um, I'll definitely see it. <laughs> well, then you. Yeah. Oh, I'll be working until it's due for the clock, so I will not. Unlucky. Unlucky, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll hopefully get a couple of guests on that one as well, no promises. Cool. But uh, we'll do our best for y'all. In is the it, meantime, if you have Billy King songs <laughs> we can use in the future, yeah. where would they email those? Uh, we have no cares at gmail.com. And if you want to make sure that we, we see your email, you could tweet us to make sure that we're, we're alert. Yes. How would they do that? Uh, at we have no cares. And if you wanted to make sure that only Rob Socks, you thought that he would be the better singer for that song, oh, that it would suit yeah, his, that's his... never, never been the case, never will be. But uh, I am at RF Borthwick in such an eventuality. And Nicole, where are you? Uh, I'm at Nicole Hay, if they prefer my timbre. Great stuff. <laughs> I'm sure they probably do. Uh, and you can find this episode and all the other ones ranging all the way back to the first game of last season on our website page, which is... <laughs> <laughs> on the information superhighway, is it? <laughs> Did I just turn into a 60-year-old yeah, there? Listen, do you have to go through the AOL homepage <laughs> to get it? Right? Bit of dial-up, um, which is wehavenocares.tumblr.com. There you go. Yeah. Well done. On the website. <laughs> Steve Crawford. Steve Crawford. <laughs>